Patrick, it's Matt Hatcher's here. We're gonna be watching My Strange Addictions. Now, My Strange Addictions are like strange addictions where addiction is something that you continually do over and over again and can't stop, like smoking or drinking. Now, these are strange addictions, so let's see what kind of strange addictions we've seen. Now, some of these I haven't seen, some of these I have seen. Excuse me. Um, I'm just recording this video because I want to see what my reaction is. So let's get started. My name is Riley. I'm 25 years old. I live outside of Buffalo, New York, and I'm addicted to being an adult baby. I dress as a baby as often as I can. Whenever I come home, I always slip into one of my cute little outfits, and it helps me wash away all the stress of the big, tough world. Oh, she has Riley has turned her bedroom into a nursery. She sleeps in her crib every night. I love pajamas, especially footy pajamas. Things with ruffles and pink. I love having my hair in pigtails and sucking on my pacifier. Since the show, our relationship really hasn't changed, to be honest. I mean, we are still extremely supportive of each other. I love her completely and utterly, and she's exactly the same way about me. Shi-chan actually really enjoys foot rubs. That's probably one of her favorite things in the world. She thinks her feet are like one of her best and cutest assets, and I'm inclined to agree. I think people think uh, having a synthetic partner is strange because it's just so out of their realm of possibility. That's, for instance, why I had the psychologist come around and uh, I spoke with him for a bit. Is there a part of you that thinks this is peculiar? I just think it's a matter of time before more people are choosing the synthetic option. Dave, she can't see. Yeah. And she can't hear. Yes. But one of the most fundamental elements of an addiction is it provides relief from pain. Yes. What's the pain here? Uh, the pain, I would have to say, would be loneliness, really. It makes you feel good. I started wearing diapers when I was about 13, and then that kind of gradually turned into fascination about pacifiers and onesies and baby or diaper accessories. When I was younger, I felt shame. I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to have a normal life doing this. Riley's friend James is one of the few people who knows of her strange behavior. I first found out about Riley's addiction maybe about three or so years after we became friends. You know, I was a little surprised. You don't run into too many adults that like to dress like babies. I know it's something that is very unique to me, and I definitely don't tell people unless I think they're going to be okay with this. It's my little secret. Riley is also transgender. She was born a male, but always felt awkward and out of place. Five years ago, Riley began living as a female. I believe that gender is something that you can choose. I very much believe that I'm a girl. It just feels so comfortable and it's just so right for me. <laughs> I get it. The relationship I have with Shichan is for my happiness. You know, if I play along and pretend that she can see, she can hear, that sort of thing, well, if that's what makes me happy, you know, that's what makes me happy. So I really see no reason to change. I placed an order at the tail end of last year for a second doll. Um, her name's going to be Elena, Elena Vostokova. Shidori is the wife. Elena is the live-in girlfriend. It'll be a modern family. No, no. My name is Teresa. I am 56 years I'm old. Teresa. Live in Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm addicted to my hairless threats. Okay. This is my Coco. I have Nelly here. This is my sweet comes blindy, and she is my little pride joy. I'm known as the Rat Lady. Teresa's addiction began 10 years ago when a boyfriend introduced her to hairless rats. Now her studio apartment overflows with 52 of them. I felt I've made many bad decisions, poor choices, and did not do everything I should have done. 
My family hasn't had any contact at all with me. Mm -hmm. So my rats give me this unconditional love I can't get anywhere else. My mom's addiction is, it's a weird addiction and obsession that she has. Like, who really is addicted to rats? That's not normal. The first time I've seen one, I was kind of repulsed by these critters with no hair. Now, we're a unit in a family together. I love you. I Teresa treats her rats like human companions. My rats just love to eat anything. You can make spaghetti for them. Pizza, mm -hmm. chocolate, and cupcakes. Look at your dicky butts. Look at these happy munching faces. Teresa also sleeps with her rats. We all get comfortable. The group will lay over there in their little blanket. Might be two or three that's laying near me. Mm -hmm. Teresa's unemployed and struggles to pay her rent. She often buys rat food before she pays her bills. I just got this on the door. It's an eviction notice. Me and my rats could be out in the streets. She feeds her rats before she'll feed herself. It's crazy. Mm, your favorite. Uh-oh. If you want to be part of other people's life, then you have to learn to be more responsible. You know you can't afford to keep these rats. Why would you ask your daughter to buy your rat food? I'm ashamed of that, and I'm sorry I did at the time. So, now you need to make a change. Now is the time. Not next month, not a year from now. Now. I don't know if I can part with them. They become so dear to me. My name's Teresa. I'm 44 years old. I live in Bedford, Virginia. A pretty day today. And I'm addicted to eating rocks. Oh. I don't think I would be able to function every day if I didn't yeah. eat some quantity of rock. Yeah. It's like Teresa has story. been addicted to eating rocks oh, for more than 20 years. She was initially attracted to the earthy smell. I was just out walking one day. I had no intention of biting into it or chewing it, but I did, and once I did that, I was hooked on them. Now, Teresa can't go more than a few hours without eating rocks. It's the grittiness of it and the earthy taste. I actually like how it feels on my teeth when I'm crunching them up. My name is Gloria. I'm 28 years old. And my addiction is bleach. You don't drink it, do you? I love bleach a lot. I ain't going to say I love more than I love myself, but I do love bleach. I don't consider myself a germaphobe. I'm not afraid of dirt. I'm not afraid of germs. I just like the feel of bleach. Every day, Gloria cleans her house top to bottom with bleach. She goes through more than 300 gallons every year. Bleach has ruined her clothes and damaged furniture, but Gloria refuses to stop cleaning with it. And I go and I wipe like, my tables down, my stairwell down with it, cleaning the bathroom with it, my toilets, my sink, the tub in the kitchen, I clean my stove with it, my countertop, refrigerator. There's been times where I walked in the house and bleach, the bleach smell just slapped me in the face. <laughs> Gloria's addiction to bleach began seven years ago while she was pregnant with her third child. When I was pregnant, I used to take pieces of tissue and dip, dip them in bleach and take them like pills. But my nutritionist and doctor, they, they made me stop doing it. And, and I thought it was just because I was pregnant and it would go away. But Gloria's bleach addiction didn't go away, and she's even taken it a step further. Every morning, Gloria now adds bleach to her bath water. Every time I take a shower and or a bath, I have to use bleach. I have to use it. Mm -hmm. I first run the water, then I take the bleach and I pour it in a tub. It's not a certain amount that I use. I just pour until I feel like it's enough. When I stay too long, my eyes have burned and my skin have tingles, so that lets me know that it's time to get out. Okay. <laughs> 
Nathaniel. I'm 27 years old. And I'm in a serious relationship with my car. Morning, baby. My handsome man. He's gay. Nathaniel is in a committed oh, relationship so with a car that he's named Chase. He met Chase in a resale lot about five years ago. Love you, baby. <laughs> Teresa's favorite type of rock is a mixture of several minerals, including granite. She uses a hammer to break them up into bite-sized pieces. This is about the size I like it because um, it's not as hard to swallow. I would normally take a piece like this and normally just put it in my mouth or bite on it or just put the whole piece in my mouth and... and get the earthy taste off of it. My name is Jesse Campbell and I'm addicted to Minecraft. I started playing Minecraft when I was seven years old. I asked my mom if I can buy it, but she said no, so I stole her credit card. You know, they say if you practice in real life, you get better in game. I think it's working. Oh, shit. I don't see how being addicted to Minecraft is actually a bad thing. You know, it's, it's a really great game. I love playing it. Anybody loves it, you know. There's tons of servers to go on. Yeah. My name is Heather. I'm 43, mom of two beautiful children, and I'm addicted to drinking paint. As it's going down your throat, it feels very nice and warm, almost like a thicker version of warm milk. But obviously, it's got that very strong chemical taste to it, which is perfect to me. <laughs> His love at first sight. His body and then his interior and everything just together just seemed to fit. I just felt an instant connection. All right. Nathaniel's. I need pauses. I I need to stop. I need to stop. I can't. I can't right now. My stomach is. Uh, the drinking paint lost me. All right. That's all the time we have for this episode. I'll see you dudes in the next video. Stay freaking, my friends.